Welcome to the podcast for Gateway Baptist Church. You're listening to a message from our Mackenzie campus. Find us at gatewaybaptist.com.au if you'd like to connect with us as we seek to change lives by following Jesus in our community, our nation, and our world. Whether you're joining us online or you're here in the room, it is fantastic to be able to come together, to be able to worship God and to open His Word this morning, and particularly this morning as we kick off a brand new series called Who We Are. Last Sunday was a fantastic Sunday as we, uh, we had Vision Sunday and stepping in to a new season of, uh, of our life as Gateway Baptist Church, as we look towards the next seven years and turning 100 years old. And as part of that, we are going to go through the next few weeks our, uh, our values, the core values of who we are as a church. As Brad mentioned, you can pick up a life group booklet just at the stand on the right-hand side of the foyer on your way out uh, this morning. You can also download it online. In this, group, this booklet will be a great resource for you and your life group to uh, discuss a little bit deeper, to de- dig a little further into the values that we have as a church. And you might have noticed as well, we used to have 12 values up on the, uh, the uh, exit, above the exit. We've, uh, we've narrowed that down. And we've, uh, we've spent some time as a, as a church kind of trying to distill those values into some, uh, some smaller statements so that we can actually remember them. It's really hard to remember 12 things, but it might be a little bit easier to remember five. And so this morning, we're going to dig into the value of, um, the, of, of living a, with abundant generosity. And if you're really clued up, you'll notice that it's actually a little bit different from the value that we did have. It was, uh, the value was we give with abundant generosity. We've shifted that to we live with abundant generosity. And so today is not the giving talk. I'm sure you're very happy that we're not doing the giving talk today. But I want to uh, share with you a little bit around this value of living with abundant generosity, of, of, of using the time, talents, and treasure that God gives us to bless people in need locally and around the world. But before we do that, as we jump in, I want to ask you a simple question What would you do differently if you knew then what you know now? What would you do differently if you knew then what you know now? I reckon we all have these moments in our lives where, oh, gee, I wish I'd done that differently. You know, uh, for me, when I was in uh, university, uh, if I knew now, sorry, if I knew then what I knew now, I would choose not to eat that two-day-old KFC that had been sitting in the fridge. It's a very bad decision on my part. I, I now know that that can lead to really bad food poisoning, and I actually rarely touch KFC. If I knew then what I knew know now, I would have slowed down a little bit as I passed that random car weirdly parked on the side of the road so that I didn't get a picture of my car in the mail a couple of weeks later. And if I knew then what I know now, I would never have eaten a giant chicken wrap before going on the big spinny ride at last year's Thanksgiving Day. (laughs) Kind of a similar reaction to the KFC incident of 1999, but a whole lot more humiliating. (laughs) I don't know what it is for you, but if, if we only knew then what we know now, it would be helpful, right? They say hindsight is 2020. And today we're going to actually explore, we're going to delve into a story that Jesus told us to show us how to live wisely. We're going to discover someone who probably wished that they could have their time again, if only they'd known then what they would know now. So if you have your Bible with, us, with you this morning, uh, we're going to read one of Jesus' parables from Matthew chapter 25. And these parables that Jesus shared were used to teach his followers how to live for God's kingdom. These stories would always point to spiritual truths in a familiar and accessible way. Just like us today, Jesus' original listeners were often consumed by the temporary. They were so consumed by what was happening then in the moment, as we are today. It's all about what's right in front of us. But Jesus uses these parables to challenge us to focus on the eternal, to lift our eyes from the immediate and to have a focus that is eternal. And this uh, parable here gives us some inside information on how to live our life 
in a way that impacts eternity. It's probably pretty familiar to you. You may have heard it before. It's the parable of the talents. And it gives us some wisdom on how we can live lives of abundant generosity. Let's jump in at uh, verse 14 of chapter 25 of Matthew. And this is Jesus talking. He says, again, it will be like. What is he talking about when he says it? A lot of these parables talk about the kingdom of God. And so that's the topic here. That's the subject. Jesus is saying, he's explaining what the kingdom of God is like. He says, again, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Uh, To one, he gave five bags of gold. Your Bible might say talents. We'll come to that in a minute. To another, two bags. And to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The master here is an incredibly wealthy man. And he entrusts his wealth to his servants while he goes away. In the original texts, uh, Jesus uses the the Greek word uh, talenton in explaining the wealth given to these servants. In Jesus' day and age, a talenton was a measure of currency in the Roman Empire. and It was actually the largest measure of currency. The, the, The word talenton referred to an amount of money that was equivalent to 20 years of a laborer's wage. If we put that into a modern context, a single talenton would be the equivalent of close to 2 million Australian dollars. In anyone's language, that is a lot of money. And it's why the Bible, some of the Bible translators have used the word bags of gold to try and describe the immensity of what the master entrusts to his servants. And Jesus is making the point here that in his generosity, God blesses people abundantly. See, the Bible teaches that God owns everything. Everything we see is His. Everything that, uh, that we touch, He's made. He is the author of all creation, and He holds it in His hands. Romans 11 says, For Him, and through Him, and for Him um, are all things. All things. God has made everything. God owns everything, yet He entrusts it to His people. He calls us to steward, to look after whatever it is that he's entrusted us with. And it's not just about money. Over the years, Bible scholars have agreed that Jesus wasn't just talking about financial resources here, but all resources that God gives his people. See, the word talenton is where we get the English word talent from, meaning our skills, our passions, our abilities, the the things that we're good at. Every single resource is a gift from God. And he invites us to steward those blessings as he pours them into our lives. So here the master distributes his wealth. One servant gets five bags of gold, another servant two, and finally a third gets one bag of gold. And then the master goes on a journey. Jesus continues the story saying that two of those servants put their money to work. They invested it. They managed to double what the master had given them. But the third one, out of fear for what the master might think or say and the the fear of stepping out and doing something, taking a little bit of a risk, The third just simply dug a hole and hid his bag of gold. And then Jesus continues in Matthew, in in, uh, verse 19, he says, After a long time, the master of these servants returned and settled accounts with them. And this is the part of the parable where I reckon we start to get just a little bit uncomfortable. This is where Jesus says that we will be asked to give an account of what we do with what God gives us. What did you do with the time and the talents and the treasure that I've entrusted to you? How did you use them to see my kingdom come? Jesus asks. And we might say, hang on, hang on a sec. Doesn't the Bible say that we're saved by grace? Yes, it does. And we are. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Not by anything that we do, but by what he has done on the cross. And doesn't the Bible say that there's no condemnation for those in Christ? Yes, again, it does. And when we put our trust in Jesus, we are set free from the law and the power of sin and death. But also in the book of Romans, one of the, the, uh, the, uh, the letters that Paul writes in the Bible, it says that each of us will one day give an account of ourselves to God. See, salvation is not just a bus ticket to heaven. It's what we do while we wait that matters. Now, we're not just to sit around waiting for the bus to take us. 
That would be incredibly boring. What we, what we do while we, mate, wait, while we wait matters. When I was 20 years old, I went on uh, my first overseas trip independent of my parents. And my friend and I decided to go snowboarding in Europe. And uh, we were going to fly to London and get a bus from, uh, from London out to Austria, where we we're going to spend two weeks in the snow. But our, pl- our plane landed at Heathrow very early in the morning. But we didn't really want to just go straight to the bus station and wait there for the rest of the day. We were in London. So we went and we practically ran around the city, just trying to cram as much in as we could. You know, we went, to try, we went and saw all the different landmarks. We, uh, we tried to soak up the, the history and the grandeur of the place. And we actually tried to cram so much in that we only just got to the bus station with 20 minutes to spare before our trip to the mainland. See, if, if I had just sat there waiting for the bus to arrive, I would have got incredibly bored. And my experience, even though it was only a day, was so much better and so much deeper than if we just sat in the bus station. How we invest what God has given us in this life matters. And this parable shows how the master responds. Two of the servants come before the master having doubled the resources that were originally entrusted to them. And the master responds to them in exactly the same way. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Their their faithfulness, the faithfulness of these two servants brings incredible joy to the master. He says, well done, my faithful child. I'm so happy. Let's celebrate together. I love what Janine said before, that one of her motivations is to see the joy of the Father. That's exactly what's happening here in this story. But the reception isn't all that warm towards the other servant who just buried his bag of gold out of fear. See, his fear had stopped him from stepping out in faith. And the master, the master was not impressed. He says, you wicked, lazy servant. You should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would at least receive it back with interest. So you think that the third servant would have done something differently if he knew then what he knows now. If he knew that God was, wants us to grow, see a kingdom return on what he gives us. And this is how much stewardship means to God. God cares about how we look after the gifts that he entrusts us with. God cares about how we use our time, our talent, and our treasure. He blesses us abundantly, and he calls us to be generous so that there is an eternal kingdom impact, so that his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven until Jesus comes again. God's incredibly generous to us. He blesses us with time, talents, and treasure, and he calls us to be generous with those things so that we can see his kingdom grow. So how do we do that? How do we live generously? How do we live in a way that impacts eternity? Now, here's something that I want to to leave you with this morning. I want you to remember this, that to be faithful stewards of what God gives us, we need to see ourselves not as earthly spenders, but as kingdom investors. We need to see ourselves not as earthly spenders, but as kingdom investors. Well, we need to change our perspective. We need to shift our thinking from consuming in the right now, consuming in the immediate, the temporary. We need to change from that to thinking about investing for the eternal, making a kingdom eternal impact. Just like the first two servants in Jesus' parable, we need to see ourselves as generously investing what God has entrusted us with rather than just merely consuming or spending those treasures and talents. See, spending is simply trading one thing for something else. I'm going to give you this, and then in response, I'm going to get that. You know, it's a one for one. It's a swap. It's an exchange. There's no net increase. It's the economy of addition and subtraction. But investing is different To invest something is to devote something of value with the expectation of an exponential return. When we invest, we expect to see a return. And rather than just an addition or a subtraction, it turns into an economy of multiplication. 
And when we're generous with our time, our talents, and our treasure, and we invest into the kingdom of God, we will see an exponential return, and we will see an eternal return. Every day we face a choice. Do we spend or do we invest? You can choose to spend your time. You can choose to spend your time watching some Netflix. And what do you get out of that? It's an exchange. Well, it's relaxing. You get an opportunity to veg out a little bit. And in itself, that's not a bad thing. We need that in our lives. But what if you took some of that time and invested it into mentoring someone? Mentoring someone who maybe is going through some of the things that you have managed to to navigate through your life. That's an investment. That can have an eternal impact. God can use that to grow his kingdom. Or perhaps you've got a particular skill or ability, a special talent. My son Saxon has just started playing the saxophone. Uh, That's not our decision. That was his decision. Saxon, saxophone. He's going to get into trouble at some point with that, I think. But it's all him. And he just absolutely loves the saxophone. He just got it last week. And on Friday, he finally learned to play three notes. But he has no idea how to use it, how to make it sound good, but he just gets it out all the time and starts playing with it. He, he, he assembles it, he opens his case, he assembles it all, he puts it all together, and then he just blasts out these notes that are just, I'm sure we're going to get complaints from the neighbours. But he just does it for fun. He just does it for fun. Maybe you've got a musical talent or some other special ability, and you just enjoy spending your energy on that just for fun. And that's fantastic. But what if you also found a way to invest that same energy, that same gift that God has given you to draw people into worship or or connect people into community? Those things can bring about a significant return, a significant um, impact for God's kingdom. And of course, we all spend our treasure. Whether we're spending money on a coffee every morning or purchasing a new house, buying a new phone, all of these are great things, but they fade They break. They don't last. When we invest our money into God's kingdom purposes, man, we see lives and eternities changed. We see communities transformed and we see God's kingdom grow. It's a different mindset, a different outlook, rather than just spending the resources that God has given us on earthly things. What if we generously invested them so that we could see God's kingdom grow? That's what's happened here at Gateway over many Many years, generation after generation of faithful followers of Jesus have chosen to forego spending on earthly things and instead have generously invested their time, their talents, and their treasure into God's kingdom. And as a result, there's been an exponential and an eternal return. Imagine what the Reverend Edward Keith was thinking when he opened that little hall to teach Sunday school kids over 93 years ago. He gave sacrificially of his time, his talents, and his treasure to invest into God's kingdom. And there was plenty of church folk who pitched in as well. They, they raised the funds to be able to buy the hall. They relocated it onto a property at Holland Park, and they got involved in the life of the church. As they started to invest their time and their talent and their treasure, who would have thought that they were beginning something that God would continue to grow into what Gateway is today? You know, a multi-campus church that's impacting people all over the city of Brisbane and reaching people around the world as well. Investing what God has given us into his kingdom has been part of our DNA since the beginning. This is the essence of our core value, that we live with abundant generosity. We give our time, talent, and treasure to people in need, both locally and globally. We invest the resources that God has given to us for his kingdom's sake. And we see God doing amazing things and growing his kingdom exponentially and eternally. We live with abundant generosity. We've seen this church invest its talents. There are people here sitting in this room who actually literally put this building together with their hands. Every year, hundreds of people invest the talents that God has blessed them with in our carol services. And across the church, from the coffee shop to our various ministries, the people are using the gift of hospitality that they've been blessed with to provide welcoming environments and opportunities for connection around food. People are investing their time as well. 
There are people who invest huge amounts of time into the lives of others through our care center up on the hill. They're here most days during the week providing a listening ear and an encouraging voice. There are others that give up their time on a Friday afternoon and an evening and again on a Sunday morning, speaking into the lives of our young people, raising up a generation of courageous followers of Jesus. And there are so many people who give so much time behind the scenes to things that we don't see, but they're creating uh, great environments for us to worship God in. They're, They're coming together to pray and be the engine room of the church, or they're providing oversight and governance as we move forward. And finally, at Gateway, we invest our treasure. Every time I think about this, I am just left speechless by the incredible generosity of our church. Time and time again, our church is just abundantly generous. We know that we're called to be stewards. We know that God owns it all, and and we invest the financial resources that he's entrusted us with. We've seen an incredible return over the years. Locally, we've been fortunate enough to open up new campuses, build great new spaces for our young people, and and we've resourced ministries. We've had a global impact as well. We're investing into hospitals and medical clinics in some of the poorest parts of the world. We're giving to retrain girls rescued from trafficking who will never meet. And we're sending Gateway Beyond workers like Janine all over the globe to to shine the light and the love of Jesus. Yet there is still much to do. There are still many needs to be met. There are many lonely people needing a community to belong to. Some are physically hungry and need food to eat. Others are spiritually hungry and they need to meet Jesus. Our young people have big questions that they're wrestling with and they're swayed by all sorts of opinions. They need godly people to show them his wisdom. God calls us to continue to be generous, to continue to invest our time, our talents and our treasure. That's why as we head towards turning 100 years old as a church in the next seven years, that God is calling us to release 3,000 people who are serving and sent to transform communities with the love and power of Jesus. That's 3,000 people serving in a ministry somewhere. That's, that's, that's people kind of going, being called by God to serve people in their neighborhood. That's 3,000 people who are, well, part of those 3,000 people are going around the world as Gateway Beyond Workers sharing the life-changing message of Jesus. And you would have noticed uh, in this new vision season that we're just freshening a few things up and, and, and kind of re-highlighting a few things. And one of the other big changes that we're, uh, we're using is changing some of our language around volunteering and serving and introducing this new concept called Team Gateway. We believe that God has given everyone gifts and talents that can be used to bless others and build the church. We also believe that none of us can achieve that all that God has called us to do just on our own and that we're better together than we will ever be individually. We've got people volunteering and serving on teams all across the church. And as part of our new vision season, we're bringing all of that together under the banner of Team Gateway. We'll still have the welcome teams and kids teams and worship teams and so on and so forth. But we're just uh, using this, this term, Team Gateway, to capture something bigger, being part of a much bigger team. And you've, you've probably noticed some of the changes already. We've got welcome teams wearing different shirts and the Flavors of Beyond team are standing out today and they're red. But we're all part of Team Gateway. And we would love to help you find your place to serve as part of the team. A little bit later after the service in the foyer, there's gonna be a, a, an opportunity, if you'd like it, to explore more about what Team Gateway is, to say, hey, I'd love to join the team. I don't exactly know where yet, but I'd love to join a team. Some some of our people out there would love to chat with you and love to explore uh, different opportunities with you. But this morning, I thought it'd be kind of cool to hear from some of those who are already on our team, and they're going to share some experiences of how uh, they've been investing what God has given them into his kingdom. So would you welcome this morning David, uh, Anne-Marie, and uh, Michael as they come to share. Give them a huge round of applause, hey? They didn't actually organize it this way, but all three of them are, uh, are serving today. And uh, they've taken a little bit of time out to, uh, to come and, uh, and share with us. Um, and you can come in a whole lot closer this time, Mike. I know at, uh, at, at 8, 8 a.m. you're a little bit afraid of me, but come and, uh, come and join us all the way. Squeeze in here. We've got to be able to, Gateway Online's got to be able to see us. David, 
Anne Marie, Michael, thanks so much for, uh, for coming and sharing today a little bit of your experience. So, David, first yes. of all, today you're on our welcome team. Tell us. Yes, I'm on the welcome uh, team. What, today, what yeah. do you, how do you serve? Okay. Um, I'm on the welcome team. I serve and also have a I run a life group at our house every Friday. So, yes, yeah, so there's uh, two areas that I serve in. And in the life group, we've been doing that for about three years. Me on the welcome team for about two years now. That's awesome. Yeah. So good. I actually remember you when we uh, we had a, a we were fairly new to the church and we had a, a life group connection event. Yes. And uh, there were a bunch of people gathered around who all lived in the same area and they had nowhere to meet and no one to lead them. And you just said, "Yep, we'll do it." Yes. And you opened up your home and uh, and you're leaving that group faithfully. Three years later. And it's fantastic. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. Tell us, uh, David, why why do you love doing it? Why 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 do you serve uh, um, when, on those teams? When you asked me that question, I had to really think why why do I love it. And I, I think it's twofold. I love um, connecting with people. I love doing life with them and tra- just navigating uh, life with people as well. So, and then the other sort of the other and the main important side is um, just being the privilege of being used by God um, and using, like your servant said, the talents that He's given me, and saying, "Yes, I'll do it." By getting up on stage and speaking. I mean, you said, <laughs> "Could you do that?" Yes, I'll do it. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good on you. Hey, why don't we give David a round of applause, hey? Thank you. We've got, uh, we've got uh, plenty of needs for more people like David to stick their hands up and say, hey, yeah, I'll host a group or I'll lead a group. A- Anne-Marie, you serve, uh, you've got the green shirt on today. Why don't you tell us where you serve and, uh, and what you do? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm part of uh, Kidlings at Gateway. Um, I've been serving there for four years and I'm in the blue room, um, which is the three to four-year-olds. Such a joy, hey, working with three to four-year-olds. And I love, Anne-Marie, that, that, uh, that you're, you're a mum getting involved in the ministry that your kids are part of. And uh, we've got an amazing kids ministry team and kids zone and kidlings on a Sunday, but there's a lot of young people serving. It'd be great to see some more of our, uh, our next generation up speaking in to the lives of, uh, of the kids. So tell us a little story. Tell us um, uh, what you've seen God do as you've invested in the lives of these youngest children. Um, so there's many things that I can think of, um, from just the untainted faith of the little ones and how they are never afraid to share that with anyone, um, to our junior leaders entering the, um, the area and finding their feet in serving and then growing in their own faith. Um, but then before I started in Kidlings, I used to spend a lot of time in, on Sundays um, there with my own kids because they don't want to let me go. So <laughs> I just spend the time. Um, and one Sunday, a thought popped into my mind, thinking, why don't I find out if they need more help in this, in this area? Um, and then my second thought was, oh, I'm not a teacher, so um, I don't think this is for me, or um, I don't have any Bible school training, um, so that kind of disqualifies me. But then God kept tugging at my heart, and I started talking to the team about the criteria for those serving in kidlings, um, and it turns out I didn't have to have a teacher's qualification and I didn't have to have any theological background. Um, I just needed a, a heart for Jesus, a willingness to serve, and a love for young children. So since then, God has shown me that Killings is also investing into the future of the youngest ones in his kingdom, um, teaching them biblical truths like God made them, Jesus loves them, they are precious, they have a place in this world and that God has a purpose for their life and a plan for their life. Um, And these are things that they can carry with them uh, for the rest of their lives. Um, Yeah, God also showed me that um, it's his way of building his kingdom in um, what we teach them at Kidlings, they take with them to daycare and to um, kindy and to home and to their friends. Um, and they talk and they sing and they sing the songs that they've heard in Kidlings. So I just feel fortunate to be part of Team Gateway and see God advance his kingdom using these little lives. Yeah, it's so good. Why don't we give Anne-Marie a round of applause? My, uh, my four-year-old is in your blue room and she just loves singing those songs and, uh, and you, you just sing them all. It just has so much joy uh, coming out after uh, being part of Kidlings. What a, what a blessing, what a privilege. Uh, Michael, mate, you're, you've, uh, you've been involved in a bunch of stuff uh, over the years. So tell us what you're currently serving in. Yeah, I'm now in my second year of uh, serving in the coffee shop. Um, before that, I was a board director of Balloon for a couple of years and then um, trying to teach you all the park properly in the car park. 
and uh, before that working in the, uh, the local school. That's awesome. So tell us, mate, how has God grown you as you've invested into his kingdom? Yeah, it's been interesting. To be honest, I used to be pretty intimidated by the people up on stage and the worship team and the missionaries and all the big things that they're doing, and I was sort of you know, quite intimidated by that. But he's sort of really just shown me that um, I've got different talents and different skills that can be used in different ways, um, both at church and then also in the community and, and for his service. So I've really enjoyed that. And it's funny, you talk about investing before. That's how I looked at it as well too, saying, you know, Gateway gives so much to my family, my wife and kids, and I just see it as an opportunity to invest back in the church, whether it's you know, putting plants in the gardens or being nice to people in the, in the coffee shop. And um, I suppose the blessing that come out of that is really just seeing my um, young kids now volunteer, uh, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure they would have considered it sometime anyway, but I can't help but think that maybe seeing dad do it as well too is, is something that's brought them that way, which, yeah, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, it's a great way to lead your family and all that sort of stuff. Hey, why don't we give Michael and all of these guys a huge round of applause, hey? Thanks so much. God calls us to generously invest our time, our talents, and treasure to see his kingdom grow. And I love these three stories and the teams that they represent and all the other teams that we have across the church, investing what God has entrusted them with for life-changing impact. I want to encourage you that there's never been a better time to join the team here at Gateway and invest in a ministry. I just want to quickly share and and, and speak to three hurdles that might stop you from joining a team. Firstly, as you look around, uh, it can be tempting to think, ah, they don't need me. There's no gaps here. You know, you see people welcoming you at the door. You see a full band on stage. You you can grab a coffee on your way out. It's tempting to say, the church doesn't need me. God can't use me. Well, can I tell you, that's certainly not true. In describing the church, Uh, to the Corinthians, Paul writes this. He uses this metaphor of the body. He says, the body is not made up just of one part, but of many. And God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Together, we all play a part in representing the body of the church. And coming out of a season where maybe we've been a little less active in using our serving muscles, maybe we've been a little bit more insular, there are a huge number of opportunities on many of our teams. Another hurdle that can stop us getting involved from serving is, is, by, is by saying, I don't have anything to offer. I can't play an instrument. I can't lead a life group. I can't even bake a cupcake. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, the Bible paints a different picture again. God's Word tells us that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. God has created you with a unique set of skills, passions, and abilities. But we're not all made the same. We are all different, and we all have something unique to be able to contribute. Maybe you can't play a piano, but you can type on a keyboard and welcome people in our online host chat. Maybe you, you, uh, you can't, you're not ready yet to lead a life group, but you can open your home to host one. And maybe you've got no idea how to bake a cake, but you can just sit down with someone, share a coffee with them and help them feel welcome. You might not know where to start, but the key is to start somewhere. Allow God to direct you as you invest yourself into building His kingdom. And then the final hurdle I think uh, a number of us face is that it's just difficult to start serving. You might think, I don't even know how to get involved. I don't know where to begin. Well, today we've tried to make that as simple as possible. Out in the foyer, our Team Gateway stand is there and uh, there's a bunch of, uh, of team who would love to sit and chat with you. I'd love to stand and chat with you about the various opportunities there are to invest your time and your talent into growing God's kingdom. They can talk through some of their own experiences, some of the opportunities, and you can express your interest by filling in a simple form. I'd love to uh, encourage you to to think about what it is that God might be placing in your heart about serving Him in this church. Because as a church, we live with abundant generosity. We give of our time, our talents, and our treasure to people both in need locally and globally. We're a community not of earthly spenders, but of kingdom investors. And we've seen God do incredible things as we faithfully steward what He has blessed us with. Man, God has been so faithful 
to us. In the parable of the talents here that Jesus tells, he says that when the master returns and sees the servant having invested and grown the resources that he'd been left with, the master says this, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. As we enter this new season, I believe that God is saying, well done, good and faithful gateway. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. And I don't say that in an arrogant or a pretentious or a looking down kind of way. It's just that we're starting to see God's blessings come from some really unexpected, uh, some really unexpected places. Just last week, you would have heard Jason talking about the neighbours ministry that we're starting. And we've been incredibly fortunate to receive a grant that will be used to purchase a vehicle to go into communities to reach those in the, uh, the refugee and migrant community. Our Gateway Care Ministry up on the hill has been awarded a grant to provide a, a connection and coffee space for people from the community. So they don't just come in and, and, and shop for some clothes, but they can sit down and have a chat and work through the challenges that they might be facing. And we've even been awarded a grant to further expand the ministry of Gateway Online to help other churches grow their online presence and online ministry as well. God has been pouring out His favour on this church. And I believe He's calling us to be a blessing to the wider Australian church. We want to share with other churches the things that we are learning so that they can reach more people in their context for Jesus. We want to provide the great resources and curriculum that we're putting together for other churches to use. We know that God has blessed us and so we want to bless others. And God continues to call us to be generous and to faithfully steward all that He entrusts to our care. So as we enter a new vision season and a new year, I want to ask you, will you live your life as an earthly spender or as a kingdom investor? Will you faithfully invest the time, treasure and talents that God has entrusted you with to see His kingdom grow? Will you live with abundant generosity? As we close our service this morning, we're going to sing a song that reminds us of Jesus' promise to grow His church. He first promised that to, uh, to Peter, one of His closest disciples. And He called Peter a rock and said, on that rock, I will build my church. See, Jesus' plan to grow His church and to build His kingdom rests on His people. It rests on people like Peter, people like you and I, people who are just called out to follow Him, to live lives of generosity and to invest into His kingdom. He wants to use you to build and to bring His kingdom here on earth. I want to invite us all to stand this morning as we respond. It's a really practical response this morning. Now, we've talked a little bit about Team Gateway and an opportunity to serve. If God's been putting something on your heart, if God's been just encouraging you to say, hey, yeah, that's you, step out and serve. Can I encourage you to do something really simple and really practical? You can just take your phone out. I'm going to let you to take your phone out. And you could just scan with your, your camera app that QR code that is on the seat in front of you. That'll take you to a menu of options. And one of the options is join Team Gateway. If you click that link, you can give your name and, and some contact details and you can explore a couple of different opportunities. You might not know exactly where to begin and that's okay. One of our team would love to connect with you during the week and, and help, help you on that journey of finding a place to serve on the team. If you'd rather talk with someone on your way out this morning, there's going to be a great bunch of people just hanging out in the middle of the foyer. They'd love to connect with you, chat with you, and help you to serve, help you to, to express your interest to serve. But this morning, I, I, as we respond, as we sing this song, I, I want to ask you, will you take up that challenge? Will you respond to that invitation to invest your life for God's kingdom? We've heard Janine share that this morning, and what an inspiration her story has been to all of us. But if you want to say, yes, Lord, I, I want to give my life. I want to live with abundant generosity. I want to live as an in, an, a kingdom investor. As we sing this song, can I just simply invite you to, to stretch your hands out? Just in a symbolic way saying, hey, Lord, take it all. Everything that you've entrusted me with, I, I want to use it for your kingdom. I'd love to pray for us this morning if that is you. So just simply, simple act, stick your hands out. I'd love to pray for us. 
as we decide to invest ourselves for the sake of God's kingdom. Father God, thank you so much for the amazing ways that you bless us. You are such a good and generous God. This morning, Lord, we stand here with open arms saying, yes, we wanna live with abundant generosity. Lord, we don't wanna hold on to these talents for ourselves. We don't wanna go dig them in a hole. Lord, we don't wanna be hindered out of fear. But God, we wanna let you, we wanna let you take control of our lives, take control of our talents, our time, our treasure. Lord, we give them back to you. We sow them into your kingdom. Lord God, to see an eternal return. God, for those of us here this morning that are, that are exploring and thinking and considering about where we can serve, Father, I pray that you would just drop fresh ideas into our hearts this morning. Whether that's opening our home to a life group, whether that's jumping on the coffee shop team, whether it's joining the kids team. Lord, so many different opportunities. Would you just rest those things on our heart? Lord, would you show us where we can serve you and serve your church and grow your kingdom. God, would you help us to be faithful stewards? Lord, we pray that we would hear those words one day, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we honour your name. Amen. Amen. We hope you've been blessed by this message. If we can pray for you or you would like to take a further step in your relationship with Jesus, we would love to connect with you. Please head to gatewaybaptist.com.au and click on Get Connected to let us know.